In our last video, I talked a lot about false memory, how we can remember things that never happened. But since that time, there's been a lot of studies that have been released on this topic, so there's a lot more that we could say about false memory. And I just want to take a minute to talk about a couple of those. First thing I found really interesting is I found out that our susceptibility to false memory might actually correlate with our personality. A new study just found that attachment anxious people are more susceptible to false memories than other personality types, but only when they can see the face of another person. If they're exposed to new information via text or audio alone, attachment anxious people don't show any memory deficits. This might be because highly attachment anxious people tend to over fixate on facial expressions and over analyze the emotional states of others. But even so, they tend to misinterpret those emotional states. So the false memories may be based on this misinterpretation of emotional states of others. It's not all bad. The authors of the study say that just being aware of this can help us overcome this challenge and maybe supplementing our interactions with text and audio in addition to face-to-face -face interaction could also help us limit this kind of false memory. Another study found exactly the opposite effect for people who scored high in the psychopathic personality trait fearless dominance. It feels like a mirror image of attachment anxiety. Fearless dominant individuals just spend less time thinking or fixating on negative emotional states of others, and that might reduce the likelihood of forming these kinds of false memories. I'm hungry. We can also falsely remember events that never occurred if it supports our worldview. A study about the January 6th Capitol riots found that false memories were dependent on political beliefs. Democrats falsely remembered more pro-Democrat stories and Republicans more pro-Republican stories. Another study found something very similar for COVID vaccine related misinformation. We're very likely to misremember details of claims related to the vaccine when it conforms to our prior beliefs about the safety and effectiveness of the COVID vaccine. Interestingly, this doesn't correlate with attitudes about vaccines in general. It seems to apply specifically to COVID, but I guess that makes sense given how much COVID has dominated our attention for the last two years. The good news is a follow-up study found that debriefing people who had been exposed to COVID-related misinformation was highly effective at reducing the incident of false memories. So yeah, we may be very prone to false memories, especially when it confirms our prior beliefs, but it might not actually be that hard to undo the damage. Another concerning area is deepfake videos. There's a lot of concerns right now that deepfakes are going to make our problems with misinformation, fake news, and false memory a lot worse in the near future. But there's good news. A recent study found that deepfakes alone did not produce more false memories than text or photos, even though participants in this study rated the deepfakes as convincing, dangerous, and unethical. And they did produce a few false memories. They didn't reliably produce any more false memories than text or photos by themselves. So yeah, deepfakes can produce some false memories, but the silver lining is it doesn't seem to be any worse than what we're already dealing with. So. That's good news, I guess. We're actually on our way to the symphony. 